All right, for more on this and all the fallout over the weekend, we're going to bring you up to speed. We have a panel for you. It's Jennifer Kearns. She's a contributor for The Daily Caller in the Hill. Richard Roth, Democratic strategist and the founder and partner of the Roth Law Firm. Uh, happy Monday to both of you this morning. Good, good to see both of you coming on here. Jen, I, I'd love to hear your response. We saw this uh, audio leak here on Yahoo News of President Obama um, and his thoughts on the uh, Trump administration and how they've responded so far to COVID, calling it chaotic. Well, Sean, you always know when you're over the target because that's when you start to see the, the rapid fire. And I think President Trump is onto something here. You know, you look back at, at the involvement of the Obama administration in this Russian collusion narrative, and it, it, it's, it's, it has a pretty darn good paper trail. Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, Vice President Joe Biden, a guy who has a public persona of being sort of, you know, this laid back, fun kind of Uncle Joe guy, he was actually present at many of these early meetings. And at, Joe Biden himself uh, was at the January 5th, 2017 meeting a couple weeks before President Trump's inauguration, talking about how they were going to use this to sort of uh, defame President Trump's, uh, you know, entrance into office and the people he was appointing. You also look back at a, a key meeting in the summer of 2016. That was when this uh, campaign was still heated and going between President Trump and uh, then candidate Hillary Clinton. Uh, boy, they were also having these deep discussions in it, what was called an inner circle meeting uh, of which uh, President Barack Obama was present, Susan Rice was present, and James Comey was present, and Vice President Joe Biden was present. I think that is especially damning yeah. against Joe Biden here. And then you also look at uh, who also participated in these early meetings to talk about how to use this Russian uh, interference narrative against President Trump. Uh, the NSA advisor to the vice president's office at the time, which was occupied by Joe Biden, Colin Cowell was also present at those meetings. These are three very key meetings in which right. it was discussed how they were going to use potential conversations with Russian ambassadors against President Trump and the people he was appointing, such as Mike Flynn. And this this paper trail runs deep. It's going to be really interesting to see where it leads. Well, let me get Richard Roth in here. Uh, Richard, your thoughts on all this? There's a lot of information that seemed to have came out just a few days ago. Yeah, I, I thought your question was on COVID, but let's deal with the Flynn issue. Sure. Uh, the bottom line is that, yes, Jen is right. There were meetings. There were meetings upon meetings upon meetings, as there should be. They're investing. They're, there's, there's a discussion about the Russian interference, which everyone knows Russia interfered. The question is whether it was collusion. And there were discussions about the election. I mean, there was no question that Hillary and Donald were at war in their own political fight. So there's nothing wrong with having meetings. There's nothing wrong with having discussions. And if you read today, today's New York Times opinion about that 302 that Jennifer refers to, Mary McCord actually discusses the 302 and says the reason why Flynn was, was everything, there's a motion to essentially exonerate Flynn is not because of anything other than the fact that Barr wants to essentially support Donald Trump. And that's where it gets scary. It's very scary when you have an independent prosecutor appointed by the president who actually concludes, makes certain conclusions, and then you have an attorney general because they're unhappy with the conclusions to try to unwind everything. There's no question that that, that Flynn lied to, to Vice President Pence, which is why he got fired by Donald Trump. There's no question that he lied to Congress, which is why he got indicted. And the whole trying to undo this just because Barr's henchman um, a guy named uh, Timothy Shea, who signed the actual uh, motion, it, it makes me very scared. It, yeah. makes, it puts a rule of law at issue. Let me get back, and I, thanks for pointing that out. Jen, I want to get back to, to the, the first question was about Obama's response here, that we have him on audio uh, saying that it was chaotic as far as how the Trump administration has been handling coronavirus. We're told that this audio uh, leaked um, over the weekend. Your thoughts on that and now hearing President Obama coming out in public in full swing here? Well, look, I, I think it, it, it's very kind of President Obama, but it does make Vice President and, and now presidential candidate Joe Biden look very weak. Uh, the fact that you have your, your former boss coming out swinging for you uh, and, and it shows that you can't really take on the president in your current state of affairs when you're hiding out in your basement and uh, doing interviews from down there, very scripted, very selective interviews. Uh, look, it's nice that Barack Obama's wading into this, but I think it makes Joe Biden look extraordinarily weak 
that his former boss has to come in and do some pinch hitting here. Oh, Richard, I'm wondering if it is nice that Obama steps in because he doesn't have kind words for the Trump administration. And naturally, you probably can assume he wouldn't have. Uh, but nevertheless, we are facing a pandemic here, and this is really only fuel to the fire. Well, I mean, listen, this has nothing to do with Joe Biden at all. This has to do with Obama accusing Trump. Let's be clear. And when he said that it was absolutely chaotic, it is serious. I mean, what has been done in this last four months has been nothing short of chaotic. If you just look at the numbers, look at the math, look at the science, the numbers in the U.S. are grossly in excess of every single country. Our testing today on May 11th, where we are, is behind Spain, UK, Italy, France, Germany, Canada, Switzerland, and Portugal. We are behind in the taking the person per million. So testing is abysmal. Let's ignore for the moment what happened back in January and February, where Donald Trump ignored Azar, he ignored Navarro, he ignored Fauci, he ignored his doctors. And now what's happening is, you want to talk about the, the irony, now they're finding that because they're spending so much time together without social distancing, now they're finding that the press secretary of, life, of, of the Vice President is um, ha has the virus. We're finding personal personal assistance of Donald Trump have the virus. In the meantime, the intellectual inconsistency. He's trying to open up the country, and he's got to close the White House. So this has been nothing but chaos. There's been not one plan. When <laughs> after the after World War One, after World War Two. You want to talk about Wilson, you want to talk about FDR, you want to talk about Truman. There were plans. You call it the New Deal, call it whatever you want. There's no plan. And let's add to that the fact that it was eBay, as some of the governors have said, they're all competing for ventilators. Yeah. There's not one ventilation. It, it just, I got to jump in because I got to get one more comment from Jennifer and we got to go. Jennifer. Well, look, you look at the numbers of the United States, the number of cases and the number of deaths, which is the key number here significantly lower than predicted. So you want to talk about chaos, you want to talk about numbers of testing, the, where the rubber meets the road is the number of deaths in this country, and it's below 1%. It's far below what they predicted initially. And look, you, you can laugh all you want about President Trump. You can say he hasn't done enough. The one key thing he did when the world was against him was he shut down flights the last week in January. That was just a week after uh, Germany now says the WHO was lying for China, and, and that is significant. That shows incredible leadership among President Trump. Look, I understand here President Trump in his reopening strategy is, is giving the country a bit of a history lesson on, on, on federalism and, and that the Washington, D.C. doesn't have to solve every problem. Yeah. We are a republic that the states can solve. I understand that bothers people that are liberals. And they want government to solve every problem for them. But, but I think this yeah. is the deaths in this country are worse than every single first world country. Right. Let's be clear. Less than 1%. It's still higher than every first world country. I'm out of it time. Is a Guys, I'm out of time. I do want to continue the conversation in about an hour because there are some things unpacked there, specifically with WHO as well. Jennifer Kearns, Richard Roth, thank you so much.